the three dangers that you're probably not aware of relating to testosterone and definitely more testosterone as it goes to anabolic steroids, right? So testosterone, what's the difference into a steroid dose when you're just looking at things like testosterone esters? But there's many other steroids, but there's going to be a spectrum on this, you know, the danger stuff when it goes from TRT as it's more dose dependent into a steroid dose. And so many good caregivers, they don't understand what's the difference between testosterone and steroids. Well, depending on what we're talking about, it's going to be dose. You could take a small, good dose of testosterone for TRT. And then if you take too much, it goes into steroids, right? So many people don't know that. If you guys know that, you're on top of this stuff. But this presentation is going to be very relevant because if I want to come down to just time and say, Dr. O'Connor, what are the three most important dangers for a man on testosterone even into steroids? If I have your attention, here's what we're going to talk about. There are three things. It's going to be the heart system, the ejection fraction that stands for. This is androgen-induced erythrocytosis, hereditary hemochromatosis, and, and venous thromboembolism. This is the heavy-duty blood stuff. This is where the blood goes up, the red cells go up, and then it can deposit into deposition disease. I'm going to talk about everything today, guys, every single piece. And then here's old-school prostate, BPH. Not cancer, hopefully not cancer for this for a man, but let's talk about it. So let's take it right from the top. The most commonly known side effect from steroids is just going to go right to the heart. Now, everything's evidence-based. So Aaron Bagish, B-A-G-G-I-S-H, is a doctor at Harvard, big guy, and he's interested, he's a cardiologist, he's interested in how steroids affect the heart. He's done research papers. So you wanna look at Aaron Bagish about heart failure and heart disease with anabolic steroids for my evidence-based support for this, uh, 2010 and 2017 from uh, circulation. You know, this is big peer-reviewed medical journals for, for cardiology doctors. And anyone can read them. So, ejection fraction over a period of time with so much else going on, it's so multifactorial, the ejection fraction goes down and that causes heart, that's what heart failure is and you're gonna feel horrible and exhausted. And people have heart failure commonly, mainly secondary to blockages in the heart and ischemic heart disease that just happens over years and life with blood pressure and cholesterol, diabetes, and just being getting older and all the genetic interplay, of course. And But when steroids are coming into play, this is not TRT dose, guys. If you're watching this video, I'm sure you're concerned for your testosterone levels. In addition to testosterone, you want to check sexual membrane binding globulin, estradiol, free androgen index, and potentially cortisol. That's where I want to talk about today's sponsor. Let's get checked. They're a worldwide leader in at-home test kits. So you can get a comprehensive look at your testosterone levels and other labs without even leaving your home. You can order a test kit that will be delivered to you in discreet packaging. Once your sample arrives in the laboratory, confidential results will be available from your secure online account within two to five business days. These results are reviewed by a clinician and a member of the Let's Get Checked nursing team may call you to review your results. Let's Get Checked laboratories are CLIA approved and CAP accredited, which are the highest ranking levels of accreditation for labs. So if you want to test your hormone levels without having to leave your home, visit trylgc.com. This is not 
TRT dose, guys. It's not TRT, so please don't think I'm up here saying testosterone is going to cause a low ejection fraction, but the steroid level, when it goes to that extreme, and what's the extreme on TRT? If you're living on 200 milligrams a week of testosterone cypionate at some anti-aging places, that's or that's what you take, Maybe that's a good dose for you, but it's usually not. It's usually too much. And if you look at your levels and then you look at all the things we're going to talk about, the action, I'm going to give you actions, things to do, action plan right here for you to exactly know what to do and to protect yourself on this. You know, but that dose of 200, 250, 200, 180, 150 maybe, if it's too much for you... It's a steroid dose and that you have all this extra stimulation that's that's really free testosterone that's going into the, the myocardial tissue and, and it's it's growing it. So focus on this. If it's a steroid dose for sure and it's not TRT, let's go into that because it's this spectrum. So the problem with why your ejection fraction, the heart squeezes, it pumps blood out. They look at what's left behind. From 55, 50, low normal, 50 to 60, 75%. That's normal squeeze. That's ejection fraction. This is systolic heart failure stuff. Squeeze, how much is coming out, how much is left behind. And then you have diastolic dysfunction, which is an incredibly more complicated and an earlier warning that I can't even go into here, but you could read about diastolic dysfunction. It precedes the low ejection fraction for a lot of people in a lot of instances, and you want to know about this stuff. So if you're on the steroids, it's a young man and you love it, and or even too much TRT or even TRT, and you have these other risk factors I'm going to go into, what, 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 what happens? The, the left ventricle of the heart like the muscle, gets big. It, it's a muscle, and that's called left ventricular hypertrophy. The heart gets big. You hear about some of these bodybuilders when they're, when they're dead and they do an autopsy, and the heart is like double the size, you know, triple the size. So it's this huge heart, and it just gets dysfunctional. So the mass of the left ventricle, right? So that's left ventricular hypertrophy. The mass goes up, and then at a certain point, that ejection fraction, the ability for the heart to pump goes down, and then you're tired. Also, what happens to this in the modeling is there's a fibrosis that happens. The thickness of the heart is not just like an athletic heart, it's which can remodel and can be almost he healthy for people, and then it, the, the, the body can reabsorb it when they get older, and it can go down to normal. But there's atypical remodeling. There's atypical changes in the meat of this heart that, that happen, and, and that's what leads to this low ejection fraction. This is really important, guys. Look at the data if you want to really read more on this in Dr. Bagish. What can you do? What's the action plan? Let's go right to the action plan. You got to remember my ABCDs. They're everywhere I talk about. A is typically hemoglobin A1C. I'm not going to really go into that for this because this is really not a diabetic protocol that we're looking at for this, although it's certainly in the end, when you have diabetes, it's gonna worsen the, the heart disease because it's gonna be ischemic heart disease. Too much information. The first part here is keep your doses low. Don't do too many steroids. If you're adding steroids and you're young, be very careful. Consider not doing that. Either get off the steroids, guys, please really think about it, or transition to just TRT. I've been on for 30 years. And, I, and I've been paying attention to this just inherently because I was so nervous about my heart. And at 58, guys, I could tell you it's paying off. So let's go. So lowest dose of testosterone is going to be my A here. So of, or androgens, trying to keep it to a low dose. Even synergistic stuff like Test and Deca, Equipoise, even Masteron and Primo and stuff that I've... I've seen so many men love, and even I loved it. You just got to be careful because the effect on the left ventricle, the ejection fraction, you got to be careful. Now, the real money is monitor your blood pressure. And of course, the, so that's B is blood pressure. C is, C is coronary artery calcium score, coronary artery disease. 
hypercholesterolemia lipids. So look at your cholesterol. You can get this on the Anabolic Doc app in America. You can measure your labs right here, basic lipid panel. Start with it, get it done. Calcium score, you could see if you have any ischemic coronary artery disease, because that's just gonna make this potentially worse. The echocardiogram is really the gold standard. What's your ejection fraction? That's where you measure it. You get it on an echo. There are other types of getting a, a measurement of an EF that are more complicated in the hospital with left ventricular grams and all this kind of with catheters and angiograms. We're not going to talk about that. And, and MRIs and cardiac MRIs, it's not for you today. Ec standard transthoracic echocardio echocardiogram, you just want to see what the EF is. You want to know what your EF is. F is if you're tired. Next, how do you take care of this stuff? Number one is blood pressure. Number one's blood pressure. And I'm just gonna give it right to you guys. Depending on who you are, if you look at my data on this, you're gonna see that you gotta look at management of hypertension. So a guy like me would do great on an ACE or an A or B. An African American gentleman is better on a calcium channel blocker and diuretics. This is standards of care with, with JNC8, Joint National Community Hypertension, and College of Cardiology, Heart Association. Hypertension guidelines, you gotta know how to treat it. You can't just share and use the same meds. You gotta use evidence. So I love Telmosartan. I'm gonna give it to you right there, guys. It's a great drug. ACE and ARB is gonna protect the remodeling, guys. The remodeling, it protects against the atypical remodeling. And your blood pressure, you. You, you, it's going to lower the EF because the heart's pounding and it's getting, it's working against hypertension and so much back pressure. For so many years, it weakens. So blood pressure is number one. Number one, again, ACE, A or B, calcium channel blocker, Direx. Get on the Anabolic Doc app. Let me work on all this stuff because this is all I do 24-7, the cardiac stuff. Again, that's all this stuff. Lipids, you got to know your lipids. Coronary artery disease, calcium score, see if you have any plaque, get the echocardiogram. Other medications, real quick, statins, azestamibi, PCSK9, and Vasipa. Guys, I'm just trying to throw the classes because I'm on all these little combinations and permutations, and I'm telling you, if it's done right, it is, it is unreal. You will feel like a million bucks, but you gotta have it all man per man. That's why I'm here for the app, anabolicdocapp.com. So D, D is gonna be big. D is gonna have me segue into the next action here, the next important danger of TRT. Number two, it's the red blood cell stuff, antigen-induced erythrocytosis. That's the polycythemia where you're, you're building up too many red blood cells. This is not for everyone, but this is something that's seen just on TRT. This is not just steroids. If you're on steroids, this is, could be outrageous because it's dose-dependent. It's a big piece of it. This is HH, is hereditary hemochromatosis. Let's go into it, guys. I know it's complicated, but that's why I'm here for you guys. I've worked all these things out for two, two, for two decades now. Venous thromboembolism, guys. That's the blood clot in the leg that can go up for a pulmonary embolism. There's, that's on the acute side. When you see issues with, you're on androgens, is there a risk for blood clotting, hypercoagulable states, for, for DVTs, DV, deep venous thrombosis, blood clots that go up to pulmonary embolisms, you can die. You've seen it in the bodybuilders. We're not going to go into it. it. It happens. It's rare, but it's androgens can provoke this depending on who you are and what you have going on. So VTE and the other side of the red blood cell stuff that people don't know is the iron deposition overload disease. And it's, again, hereditary hemochromatosis. If you have genes for this, if you're, you have propensity for it, you have sleep apnea, you, 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 you're, you're, you're not, if you're not checking for the iron stuff and the iron studies, you're not going to see your ferritin. You're at dangerous. This is common. Up to 10% of Caucasian men, Northern European ancestry, have the genes for this. And when on just even TRT, it can be expressed and it can be super dangerous. So right here, guys, action plan for this one. 
Check the CBC, get on the app. It's all there. You don't need a prescription. You can get it all throughout America, except for two states. So it's pretty good. This is, this is H&H, hemoglobin hematocrit, also stands for hereditary hemochromatosis. I'm sorry about that. It's just, it's just our shorthand. Iron studies. This is where guys aren't always getting, everyone can do a CBC. Every anti-aging place that does a CBC and they just indiscriminately phlebotomize everyone. That is cringy. Because what if you don't need to be? Most guys don't need to be phlebotomized. If they're really on TRT and they're healthy with no sleep apnea, they don't really have the genes too bad for the expression of this stuff. So they, they, they're, they're, you don't need to be phlebotomized. You see, guys, this is too complicated. You don't know it. So you got to learn it. So ferritin, the iron studies are ferritin, total iron, and something called trans, uh, transferrin saturation, or what's otherwise known as the iron saturation. You'll see a percent. So you got to know the ferritin is arguably the most important. If you have high ferritin, whew, you're going to deposit. That means it's storage form of iron. You, you're going to store it quietly into your heart. And it's going to cause fibrosis and lower the ejection fraction. It's going to hurt your heart. It's going to hurt. You can get cirrhosis. Guys, when you fact check this, some guy said, new drinking game. Doc, every time he says fact check, we're going to do a shot. That's funny stuff, guys. Please don't do that. But you could fact check this. Hereditary human chromatosis, iron overload disease, without testosterone, you put it on testosterone, it gets massively worse. And it's just, this is just going to be genetic. Okay, guys. So CBC, H and A, which is the hemoglobin hematocrit, you see it on a CBC, get the iron studies on the app. You can get it from your doctor anywhere in the world, gentlemen. If you're in Pakistan, you guys can get this. Now, the more advanced stuff, if you want to do, but I don't really recommend this. Is to, you need a caregiver, someone like me that could differentiate and, because you don't want to get nervous. But the HFE gene, this is hereditary hemochromatosis gene, very complicated. You could look at it. Some guys love it to look at it and see their propensity for it. Look at the ferritin, look at the test levels, and then use some phlebotomizing, use some other therapies we'll talk about. Live super clean and reduce the sleep apnea that will increase it because you're sleeping on the mountain when you have sleep apnea in your little house. You're down by sea level, but at night you get transported to the top of the mountain because you're not breathing adequately. Testosterone can worsen it. And it, this whole thing is a vicious cycle. I'm telling, and that's where this stuff comes into play. There's genes for this. This, again, the more the Caucasian, more the European, the Northern European ancestry, sleep apnea. So when I see this stuff that's really whacked out and just out of control on guys, they have genes for it. They're getting older. You don't see it on baby guys, 20-something-year-old guys, baby guys. You see it as a, everything breaks. You get older, you, you lose your thresholds to, to really cope and to control, even physiologically. Sleep apnea huge risk for this, and then dose of androgen. Even TRT can cause this. Unlike up here, where I think TRT is not going to depress the ejection fraction, but it can, depending on your blood pressure and your genes and what else is going on in your life. So dose, so dose here, again, even baby doses, injections are very powerful, guys, but we feel great and the brain feels great. It's great for sex for most guys. But is it going to crank up these red blood cells and you're going to be at risk for blood clots and deposition disease that's going to hurt the heart in your liver and it's going to shorten your life? You could fact, fact check it, guys. It's super complicated. So it, beyond that, guys who love to see what to do, liver MRI or liver ultrasonography to see if you have a little bit of the beginning of some iron deposition in there. I've seen it. I let hematology doctors deal with this or liver doctors, hepatology doctors. What can you do when you look at everything, the action plan? We can use phlebotomizing. You can change your dose. Instead, this is a reason where, a good example of where you don't want to do test and DECA because test and DECA or test and equipoise or test and test itself can, can lead to this issue if you're sensitive to it, if you're sensitive. So you, you lower the dose, change the regimen. Here's some two little tips. Green tea, I, I found these are kind of secrets. 
A green tea has a side effect of slowing down this process, and an ARB called telmasartan, guys, I'm throwing it at you, also has some side effect profiles that it can slow down this train of building up too much red blood cells. I know this is complicated, guys, but that's why you're here. So BPH, last one. This is the heart stuff, circulatory stuff, and, and, and blood clotty stuff. You know, I told you, I showed you why. I showed you what to do. I showed you how to monitor it. BPH, what I always say when patients come under my care, in the end, after the hair and the acne and the gyno, as long as it's not breast cancer, and the brain and all this kind of stuff with the sex and the mood and all this kind, of, I say there's only two things that are gonna matter, guys. It's the heart and the prostate. That's it right here. So this is benign prostatic hyperplasia. This is BPH, not cancer of the prostate. Thank God the data is clear now that testosterone doesn't cause prostate cancer. You could fact check it, guys. Don't have another shot. You could do it. And when if a doctor says, oh, testosterone causes, uh, causes prostate cancer, say, doctor, please. It doesn't cause prostate cancer. However, if you have a malignancy that's in the prostate and you feed it androgen exogenously, it can worsen it. Big difference between causing something and worsening something that's underlying. So again, this is BPH. You guys, of all this stuff, I can control this with my medicines and my doses. I can control this with medicines and my doses, a little phlebotomy, green tea, telmasartan, ARB. This I have, guys, because I'm 58. I'm not going to be creepy and give you too much information. But this is because I've been on androgens for more than 30 years. I've been on 30 years of just TRT. Before that, I was on and off some steroids. I'm just being honest with you guys. So my prostate's enlarged, and I work around this with my urology doctor who gives me testosterone. He's a great guy. So we learn from each other all the time. So BPH. So this one, you need to be careful with the doses cumulatively over decades. This is where 25 and even 35, maybe 40 something year old guys, they don't care. Doc, my prostate's fine. I don't have lower urinary tract symptoms. I feel great. So this is where you want to understand. And here's some data. Abraham Morgenthaler talked about testosterone saturation model. That's, that's differentiating the cancer that the data shows that actually men on androgens appear to have a lower incidence of, of prostate cancer. And apparently the worst type of prostate cancer is lower. So this is great news for us, but you got to be humble. You got to check the PSA and you got to check the digital rectal with a, with a urology doctor, in my opinion. Why would it, why have any other guy put a finger in the rectum except if it's a great urologist? I don't do it. My fingers don't aren't as great as his. So you got to make sure of that. So uh, maybe maybe an MRI of, of the prostate, if a, if a urologist, in my opinion, wants it differentiated to see what's going on, there's... You, again, lower the dose of testosterone. This, you may not want to use some drugs and not to mention some of the DHT-derived drugs for years and years and years. Forget the hair, but what about, what's it going to do to the prostate? Could it, could it actually, ironically, protect the prostate? Super complicated information we're not going to go into. And if you have BPH and you've lowered the dose and you feel great and you need to be on testosterone, we have other drugs. We have PD-5 inhibitors like Cialis that are FDA approved for it. We also have classic vasodilators like Flomax and there's doxazosin. You know, these are alpha blockers. They're, 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 they're tricky drugs, but they do work great. And then we have a bunch of procedures. I'm not pushing procedures. Eurolift and there's some other um, procedures that these doctors do with even hot, hot steam. You know, they could really, really affect and shrink that prostate carefully and maintain sexual function. And, and guys won't have uh, bleeding issues bad versus a TERP or other conditions where you could have um, infections after some, some of these really invasive prostate procedures they'll do, typically for men that are obstructed, that are older, you have to do. So there it is, guys. I really hope you like this one. 
Um, this is super complicated, but for all my fans out there that really love me going up to that really scientific and the clinical stuff that's just up here in this brain, in my 20 years experience for just men on androgens, this is what you have here. Please spread it around, guys. Please give tons of comments about your own experiences. I try to answer some of these, as many as I can. You know I'm super cranked and busy, always working for you guys. But what's important is that the comments are there for all men to see from you. Your comment is going to show another man somewhere something that's relevant, that that's true, that you've experienced, that he could look at and make an add to. This is a really an open compendium for men to understand when I start these, what transpires to learning for open free education in the world. Thank you so much, gentlemen.